I'm with Tribute Games here at E3 of the new game Flint Hook. Would you be able to introduce yourselves in your role? Yeah, I'm uh, Dominique Ferland. I'm the game designer on this game. I'm uh, Jean-François Major, and I'm the uh, co-founder of Tribute. Awesome. I'm a big fan of Tribute Games. Mercenary Kings was one of my favorite games of last year. Uh, i obsessed with it, did every mission, played it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Tribute Games has been a lot of games, a lot of small indie Steam titles, um, but because of your art style, your fast arcadey action, your love and attention games, it's kind of getting bigger and bigger. How did you kind of start making games? What pushed you to get into this? Um, we actually started um, back at Ubisoft and we, we focused on Game Boy Advance titles. Uh, so we pretty much had to do 2D games back then. And um, then our last project at uh, Ubisoft was uh, Scott Pilgrim the game. Um, so that kind of like one thing led to the other and we decided let's just do that on our own. So we kept doing like 2D games because that was what we were good at. Um, so yeah, our first title was Wizorb, um, which was kind of like a break breaker meets Zelda type of game. And uh, yeah, now we're showing off Flintech. That's awesome. And how did you, how did you get into game development? Uh, I started uh, working in advertising and I hated it. But I got this one job to do a mock-up for a game for a mobile company. And that led me to being game designer on a Where's Waldo game and a bunch of little contract work. And now I got the dream job of just making the game I want with these guys. That's awesome. Before uh, Tribute, what were some of the titles, what were some of the Game Boy Advance games you worked on? Um, the one I'm most proud of uh, was TMNT. The, the, like, the beat em up one was really awesome. Uh, and then we did um, Open Season, Star Wars, a uh, bunch of like, yeah, a bunch of like um, IPs, I guess, like for, for hire. Before getting to Flint Hook, I want to ask again Mercenary Kings, one of my favorite games of this generation. Immediately playing it, everyone's first thought was Metal Slug. Like, oh, this is so cool. That old school SNK arcade vibe. But then it has all these kind of Monster Hunter collection details. Was, is Mercenary Kings the biggest game you guys have made so far in terms of scale? Um, yeah, it's way too big. <laughs> um, yeah, that's um, like after Wizard, we kind of decided let's go all out, let's do our like dream project. And uh, we're huge Monster Hunter fans, so we decided, like, we decided to see how we could um, recreate Monster Hunter in 2D. Um, and yeah, that's what happened, basically. Awesome. So now playing this game, I played a little bit of it. Again, it has that 2D action, run and jumping. Can you kind of tell me about this new project? When I joined Tribute, I really wanted to make a game that's faster than uh, Mercenary Kings, a game that's more about vertical movement. Uh, about uh, dynamic action. So there's now 360 aiming, 360 shooting with the hook shot. Uh, we also have a, a slow mo power, so you really can adjust. It's, it's near infinite, so you can adjust your movement and really like uh, hook over an enemy and then slow down, aim down, shoot the enemy, and then keep going. So it's all about just fast, badass action. Now, Mercenary Kings had a mission-based structure. Is this one big open map like Metroidvania? Is it level-based? It's a roguelike structure, so it's kind of a Metroidvania uh, tiny level, uh, and then you do a bunch of those in succession. And if you die, you start over the whole thing. There is a progression system, but we're not defined. It's not defined yet, so uh, we'll see later. That's great to hear. Yeah, Rogue Legacy is one of my all-time favorite games too. Again, I like small arcadey fast games. Uh, is everything procedurally generated? The levels, or is there just level design? So we hand make the rooms, but uh, the levels are made randomly assembled from rooms that we made by hand. That's awesome. Yeah, this looks great. So w the one thing, I, I love Mercenary Kings with a few of my friends. I tried playing with my girlfriend. It was tad difficult. Um, immediately died. So I know some people were turned off by Mercenary Kings difficulty. Is this game going to be a bit easier or more accessible? Or are you still sticking to the hardcore uh, arcade roots? I think the, the difficulty curve will be smoother. It's going to start with one bounty, one boss that you hunt down. It's kind of easy, like three ships and then you fight the boss. Uh, but after that, it's going to spike up. And so maybe the casual player will have fun with the first boss but we'll have trouble maybe later on uh, but the all the tools that we give to the player like the slow-mo and all that if you get used to them it's a lot of power it's a lot of uh, uh, two gadgets that you can use I think it's gonna balance itself out but then again I'm kind of hardcore so I'm putting a lot of shit and a lot of uh, obstacles and hazards because I want I want that challenge of using the slow-mo all the time and... No, I think I think that's a really cool... I mean, even looking at this here, it still looks like it has hardcore elements. Um, what are some of your favorite games? I mean, I know, like, I, I talked about Metal Slug, like, like, there's, like, Mega Man influence in it. What are, just individually, some of your favorite games? Um, 
I think like the old arcade games like uh, the Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, what else? Um, uh, like we're we really love Mega Man, so basically we get a lot of uh, of that vibe like in our games. Um, and yeah. on, on my side, it's all the roguelikes. So Spelunky yeah. is my all-time favorite game. <laughs> uh, uh, Rogue Legacy, all those games are, that have this depth of uh, really fast action, but then you get really hooked into the whole system. So yeah, that, those no, I, I think that's saying a reason why I like Mercenary Kings and yeah, games like Rogue Legacy. I love these games that are small, so you can pick up and play for a bit. But if you want to just play all night, you can. Like really, like that's so. Hearing hearing that there's roguelike influences here, I'm sold. Is there a release window in mind next year, this year? Any idea? Uh, early next year. Awesome. Super cool. And again, the art style is great. Is the same um, composer as Mercenary Kings? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's his bull show. He's really good. Yeah. Mercenary Kings soundtrack is great. Now I'm gushing a lot about Mercenary Kings. I haven't played too much of your other games. What should I check out from Tribute? Um, you should definitely check out Curses and Chaos. It's a really crazy 2D brawler um, with co-op. Yeah. And uh, there's also Wizard. That's uh, our first title, but it's really unique. And um, yeah, everyone's gonna enjoy that one. And don't, don't forget Ninja Senki, which is really like Mega Man style, super simple, uh, retro style platformer. That's awesome. I'm gonna check these out. Now, one thing, this is kind of a cavalier question, but uh, what I do a lot is I bookmark a bunch of games on Steam, and then during the big summer sales, I'll buy them all at once. Do you guys encourage that? Do you wish people would pay full price for it? I mean, I, I <laughs> just, just, uh, just an honest question. Uh, no, we're really, really happy because like people will just wait if they're not too, um, yeah, if they're not ready to buy a full price. So it's good. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> awesome. And I'm curious about your own game habits. Do you guys try to consume everything to get a taste as you're developing? Do you have specific tastes? Generally, just asking, what do you play and what do you seek out? Um. Yeah, I tend to do the same thing. I wish list a lot of games because there's just so many, and my back catalog is like really, really long. Um, but like games like Odin Sphere, I just couldn't like pass on that, so I, I picked it up as like. Yeah. I'm more of a, on the indie side, like I play everything that comes out, but I don't play a lot of this on one single game, except when there's a, like a Metal Gear Solid 5, then it's like, oh, yeah. I played that for 40 hours in like 3 weeks, and then I go back to indie games until there's one good game that comes out, a good big game. Awesome. Jared, what do you think of the game? Oh, it's really fun. It's easy to control, like, like Mercenary Kings was really hard, but this is, this is, I got, I, yeah, this is good. It's good here, yeah, controlling it, it feels good, it plays well. So yeah, Flint Hook, I'm dying to play it. It looks awesome. I like that you have the um, the uh, d hit damage numbers. Those are just little small details I really like, those RPG elements. Is there anything, other message you want to say to people to, to promote your game, Flint Hook? Uh, just talking about it. Just keep talking about it. Help, help us spread the word, because uh, there's not a lot of retro games, uh, retro pixel games out there, so we need some help to spread the word. Yeah, I think he's something I don't know. I think... 2D is not um, is just a different type of art, and um, yeah, you shouldn't like turn turn away from those, I guess. Awesome, thank you. And then this is uh, irrelevant to this, but one quick question: Scott Pilgrim is in limbo. I don't think you can get that game anywhere, anywhere. It's dead. We're so sad about it. Like, I, I really wish we could um, like have physical copies of the game or something, or even like just release it on Steam. And uh, fortunately, it's out of our power. <laughs> yeah, because I have we have so many friends like Mariel. I'm friends with Paul Robertson, Arnold Managuchi. So many friends. I, I thankfully have it on my 360. Love that game. Another game I played obsessively. And yeah, it's just vanished. But thankfully, you guys have split. <laughs> um, you have making your own games. These are all fantastic. Thank you so much. And then lastly, is there any other game here at E3 you're super stoked about? Um, I was super excited by Dead Rising. I don't know, the, the teaser trailer was crazy. I, I just played the uh, Dragon, Dragon Quest Builder game. I'm just looking for a new Minecraft experience because I got tired of it. So I think that's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. And then lastly, you guys are here at the Xbox booth. Are you guys part of Xbox's indie program where it's on Xbox and Steam first? Can you explain that a bit? There's really nothing to explain. Like we're we're not sure like where we're headed right now. Like we're focused on Xbox, um, but we'll definitely look into other platforms. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad any like both Sony and Xbox. I, these are my favorite sections of games at E3. The little indie booths. I love indie games again. The art, the personalities. So thank you again so much, Flint Hook. I'm gonna check it out. Thanks. Neighborhood Game Club at E3. Thank you.